Deep down, all human beings are religious. Man is by definition a religious being. Why? Because he knows there is something of mystery to his life. You know, life is a big mystery. My name is uh, Rabbi Nathan Lopez Cardozo, born in Amsterdam and living already for many years in uh, Israel and Jerusalem. My background is completely secular. My father was a very proud Jew. We belonged to the Portuguese Spanish synagogue of Amsterdam. My father was a great admirer of Baruch Spinoza, a famous philosopher in Amsterdam who broke away from the Jewish tradition. And I used to study pieces of Spinoza with my father and that created me an interest of knowing more about the Jewish tradition. Uh, beside my official Talmudic studies in the yeshiva, I read also non-Jewish stuff, I read non-Orthodox stuff, uh, reform, conservative, uh, agnostic, uh, atheist, uh, whatever I could get my hands on I read. And it only caused an even greater love for the Jewish tradition basically because I saw how the Jewish tradition actually stood out. But now we are living in a marketplace of ideas. Every Jewish child in the world hears left and right what's going on, websites, uh, information comes from everywhere. Our whole mentality has changed, our whole way of life has changed. And what is so interesting is that the Talmud represents that. The Talmud is actually not something which is outdated, but the Talmud in many ways is in front of us. It is somewhere describing a situation which is ideal, where autonomy, and where man's individuality is very much emphasized and that therefore these texts are today tremendously relevant to young people because now they can make that choice that the tradition is much larger, much broader, much more flexible for allowing so many possibilities. When God gave the Torah to the Jewish people, he didn't give one straight answer or Torah and said that's what it is. He gave many colors. It is like light which comes down from the sun by the time it comes to our place it breaks up in many different colors. It splits up into many different dimensions. Truth reflects itself in many different ways. Right? Uh, you have in science even matters like that where they discuss the question about the theory of light. Is light a particle or is it a wave? Right, it's a very famous debate within science, right? It is both. Somehow, it doesn't make sense. It cannot be both, we would say logically, because it's or a wave or it's a particle. But the instruments show they're both. It is similar in the sense of there are many ways how truth appears to us and how it somehow reveals itself. And that's what the Jewish tradition is saying. I always uh, complain about the fact that when we teach our children halakha, we tell them you're not allowed to do this and you should do this and so on. I personally believe that's the wrong way of doing it. Because you first have to teach them what is the whole purpose behind this? Why do I have to keep Shabbat? Why do I have to eat kosher? Spiritual satisfaction is when you feel I have made a contribution. Just to do whatever I like to do is mediocre. If I understand that what I do is something of importance and I contribute to the world, to mankind at large, to the Jewish people and so on, then I have real freedom. Freedom does not mean I do what I like to do. Freedom means that I do what I ought to do. That's what religion is all about. And that's what we need to bring back into our religious school system and in our religious education to all the people which lived after the days of the Talmud, like my money does and everybody, were outstanding people and made incredible contributions. I'm saying, let's use all that knowledge which they gave to us, right, with all their incredible creativity and then reapply it on the tongue. So I'm not saying you should go back in time. What I'm saying is there were books written who are in front of time. And I think the Talmud is one of them. One of the greatest problems today also in our universities and I'm part myself of the university world is that we offer every class except for being human. For being what they say in Yiddish to be a match and to be able to live in the presence of God. Now obviously you can't do this academically but you can make use of a lot of knowledge and of experiences of all also people which we have to bring to people and say, you know what, 
living is an unbelievable great art. And you have to know how to do this. Jewish tradition would claim that the halacha helps you how to do this. Because it is obviously not an easy thing. Living life is a very difficult issue. It's something which, which takes time before you, you get it, before you are able to relate to it. And we need to give it much more attention. Once missiles are in the air coming at you, you have to be able to shoot them down. Ballistic missile technology is rapidly proliferating. Nuclear technology is also rapidly proliferating. Look at the rate at which new kinds of weapon systems have been absorbed into military structures. It's always been very slow. Our challenge now is to speed that process up. I die before I get old